Good morning, FCF. I want to hear a shout of victory with these no masks. Great. <laughs> We're going to start off this, t this morning with House of the Lord, because this is his house. So let's uh, worship our Lord and Savior this morning. Please join us. The God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. Yeah. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise, there's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross And he rose up from that grave My God still rolling stones away There's joy in the house of the Lord There's joy in the house of the Lord today And we won't be quiet We shout out your praise There's joy in the house of the Lord Our God is surely in this place And we won't be quiet we shout out your praise We were the beggars And now we're royalty We were the prisoners And now we're running free We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace Let the house of the Lord sing praise We were the beggars and now we're royalty We were the prisoners And now we're running free We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace Let the house of the Lord sing praise There's joy in the house of the Lord There's joy in the house of the Lord today And we won't be quiet we shout out your praise There's joy in the house of the Lord Our God is surely in this place And we won't be quiet We shout out your praise There's joy in the house of the Lord There's joy in the house of the Lord today And we won't be quiet We shout out your praise There's joy in the house of the Lord Our God is surely in this place And we won't be quiet we shout out your praise We shout out your praise We shout out your praise There is joy in the house of the Lord this morning we're going into Raise a Hallelujah now, and um, I have it on my heart to say this. Um, you know, we all go through weeks where our, uh, our emotions maybe aren't where they, you want them to be, or you know, like you really feel like the devil's really hitting it where it hurts, and he just knows exactly when to get you down, right? And I think that, you know, you, you sit there and you're like, oh, you know, like, I'm not worthy of this, and I, I don't know what I'm doing, like, I shouldn't, like, you know, like, I'm not worthy. And uh, as I was driving to work the, or to church this morning, you know, we are worthy all the time. And no matter where you are in your faith, whether you've been a well-practiced Christian for 45 years, you're still going to have those moments of doubt and those moments where 
just life just feels like it's just it's hitting you right where you know it you're at your worst and you're like I shouldn't be here anymore this isn't shit where I should be you know like I should be I should feel powerful and I should feel like I have that authority all the time but we're we're not always that way and so I feel very grateful that I serve a God that no matter where I am no matter where my mind is he's still there and he still he still wants to help you and he still you know he is louder than your unbelief he's always there always in the presence of your enemies you know his everything that you believe in is he just wants to stand there and he wants to stand in that storm with you and so I just think about that as we sing this next song because he deserves all of our praise all of our hallelujahs so let's just sing this together hallelujah in the presence of my enemies I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief I raise a hallelujah my weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder. You're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise. Death is defeated. The King is alive. I raise a hallelujah. With everything inside of me, I raise a hallelujah. I will watch the darkness flee. I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery. A hallelujah. Fear you lost your hold on me. And I'm gonna sing in the middle of a storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise. Death is defeated, the King is alive. I'm gonna sing in the middle of a storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise, death is defeated, the King is alive. Louder than the unbelief, sing a little 
louder My weapon is a melody Sing a little louder Heaven comes to fight for me I'm gonna sing In the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated The King is alive I'm gonna sing In the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated The King is alive Let's go into that bridge of uh, sing a little louder in the presence of our enemies I want to hear the church just praise that this morning Go ahead, Daniel a little louder in the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder, louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder, my weapon is a melody. Sing a little louder, heaven comes to fight for me. Sing a little louder in the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder. Louder than the unbelief Sing a little louder My weapon is a melody Sing a little louder Heaven comes to fight for me I'm gonna sing In the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated, the King is alive. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise. Death is defeated, the King is alive. that you need met this morning as we sing this last song just invite his spirit in he does want to he does want to help you he wants to give you peace and, and grace to keep going so no matter what it is if it's sickness disease finances anything just just give it unto Jesus Lord and let's just invite him into this presence this morning Jesus. 
sit and sing of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone
there's nothing like the presence of the Lord. Not just in a church service, but in our daily lives. In the beginning, God planned it that it would be that way. Adam and Eve walked and talked with God in the cool of the day. They planned with him, they worked with him. And he led them all the way. And that's what Jesus came to restore. Mm -hmm. Is that fellowship. That relationship. There is nothing like the presence of the Lord. I encourage you to seek and to crave and to desire his presence. It's not a weakness. It's a strength to depend on the all-wise God, the all-knowing God, our healer, our provider, step by step in every day. He will lead you all the way to victory in your health, in your business, and in everyday life, even as a parent raising your children. His wisdom is available. We are children of God, led by the Spirit of God. There is nothing like the presence of God. And so, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in our lives. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord, your presence, Lord, thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your presence. We thank you that you never leave us, you never forsake us. Teach us how to be aware of your presence. That is, Father, beside us, around us, behind us, inside of us, that in your presence of fullness of joy and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Father, I thank you that you have promised that if we would be hungry and if we would be thirsty for your righteousness that you would fill us. And so, Father, I thank you for creating a hunger for your presence, a hunger for your friendship, a hunger for your communion, hunger to be with you and to enjoy you and to live with you and have you live with us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that that good work that you're starting in our lives that you are bringing to completion, and Father, we just, we lift up our leaders in the land. And Father, we recognize that there's only one kingdom that stands. The kingdom of God prevails over the kingdom of man. And that you have the power and the ability, Father, to set one up. The humble, you are able to exalt. Father, the proud, you are able to abase. I thank you, Lord Jesus. 
as we lift up our leaders before you. I thank you for softening their hearts, turning their hearts towards you. And Father, I thank you that you've given us authority and power to use your name. And so, Father, we thank you that the name of Jesus prevails over fear, over depression, over discouragement, over despondency, over a spirit of hopelessness. And I thank you, Father, that you have granted us the mind of Christ. As we keep our minds stayed on you, you give us perfect peace. And I lift up those that are dealing with sickness and disease in their bodies, anyone that is struggling physically. I thank you, Father, that we don't have to beg you to do something because you've already moved 2,000 years ago. By the stripes of Jesus, we were healed. And if we were healed, we are healed. And I thank you, Father, for your healing power, the same spirit that raised the Lord Jesus from the dead, bringing life and healing and energy to every nerve, every cell, every tissue, every part of our bodies in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you for anyone that is suffering with any kind of emotional distress. I thank you for bringing hope. Father, we've been singing about hope. Our hope is in your presence. Our hope is in you. We do sing a hallelujah. We do raise up the, 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 our praise. We do lift up our countenance in your presence. You are the God of all hope. I thank you for bringing solutions today to those that, Father, are without answers. I thank you for showing a way where there seems to be no way. I thank you for shedding light upon the pathway of someone, Father, that has been walking in darkness. I thank you, Father, for softening hearts. I thank you for the prodigals, Father, coming home in this hour. I thank you that they're coming to their senses. They're coming to themselves in the name of Jesus. That, Father, the deception's leaving. And, Father, they have a desire and a hunger to come back to the Father's house and be in your presence. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that no weapon formed against us will prosper. And I thank you, Father, that 2021 is not a year of shortage. It's not a lost year. It's a year of abundance. It's a year of favor. It's a year of answered prayer. It's a year of fulfilled promises. It's a year, Father, that you show yourself strong and that you will be lifted up and all will know that you are Lord and truly you will have dominion from sea to shining sea. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I have a few notes in my notebook <laughs> from a message that Pastor Michael had a number of years ago. Faith for rain in the time of rain. Now, it's been a time of rain already for a while, and we've hardly seen any rain. It's just a lot of drought that we've seen. And I love the announcements that Pastor Linda always gives about various showers. <laughs> but we, we want rain showers <laughs> as well. So anyway, I heard this morning that there's drought and there's fires and of course some places in the world have floods and you know, nature's kind of in chaos. And it's all because of climate change. It's all because of the environment. It's all because we're burning fossil fuels. Well, if a, if a house is in chaos and disarray, it's not because we're heating natural gas in the furnace. It's because there's a spiritual thing going on, possibly. And that's what the world is all about. The, the church is not in control the way it should be. And in our own spiritual lives, we've cooled off. And like Terry Law says in his book on angels, um, many nations and leaders, they have left God and pushed God aside and gone under Satan's control because he's the God of this world system and it is now civilization functioning apart from God. And we can, that happens in our homes, it happens individually, it happens in nations where we can f try to function apart from God and it won't turn out good. And that's the, what we're seeing, whether it's plagues or famines or 
all kinds of weather patterns. It's the groaning of nature, the groaning of God's creation for the sons of God to rise up and for the church to be all that it needs to be. And so that's, you know, they're saying the greatest emergency is our environment now and, uh, and climate change. But uh, that's just a side issue. That's a distraction. We need to focus on spiritual things. We need to focus on God, and he'll get us back where we need to be. 1 Kings 18, verse 1, which is the chapter about Elijah. We must hear God on the inside. Circumstances can be anything, but what is God saying to you? Or what is he saying to us? What is the word of the Lord concerning the situation? Faith is not for the circumstances to be right, but to see what God sees and what God's plan is. Elijah had to trust the word of the Lord and follow him step by step to get the breakthroughs. We must trust the Lord not looking to the natural and not leaning to our own understanding. When Elijah prayed for rain, nothing happened for some time. It takes continual faith and persistence. Sometimes a still small voice is how the Lord speaks. Our faith for a miracle starts in seed form. The harvest comes later. We must win over discouragement and self-pity and look to the Lord even in times of victory. Whatever drought is in our life, it's over. Keep praying for rain, keep sowing, praying, trusting, and hear the word of the Lord. So those are notes from that message. So... I think it's quite pertinent to this time. And so we need to seek the Lord like never before. We need to turn to him like never before because we can stay in our comfort zone too easily and lukewarm, but let's get on fire and we can do that. Let's put up the confession. And I like the first song that we sang today. There were some words in there, forgiven and redeemed. Uh, so that's awesome. And... Uh, we are accepted in him, we are approved by him, we are God's children, and so let's declare it. I am blessed, I am redeemed, I am forgiven, I am loved, I am healed, I am free, I am prosperous, I am talented, I am creative, I am confident, I am secure, I am disciplined, I am focused, I am prepared, I am qualified, I am determined, I am equipped, I am empowered, I am motivated, I am valuable, I am anointed, I am accepted and approved, N I am not average, I am not mediocre, I am a child of God, a child of the Most High God, I will become all that I was created to be. Amen, amen. Well, let's stand. Let's uh, make our confession. Let's release our faith. I don't know if you have a Bible but, uh, or your, a device, but let's hold it up before the Lord. Let's make our confessions and uh, declare, I am, I am who God says I am. God says I, am. I have what God says I have. I can do what God says I can do. Today, I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Never, 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 never the same, never the same. In, Jesus name. in Jesus' name, amen. You know, we've been in a series talking about our God is a God of restoration, and he's in the restoration business. Last week, we talked about how it's our faith that brings restoration. And we used the example from Mark 5 about the woman with the issue of blood. And in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5, Jesus had just come across the lake. He had set a man free from demon power, uh, a legion of demons. 
set him free, and he just come across the lake, and as he's getting out of the boat, a crowd presses in right all around Jesus. And as that crowd is pressing in, there is a, a, a very well-to-do, rich ruler of the synagogue by the name of Jairus. And he stops Jesus, and he falls down at his feet, and he is in a crisis. He is desperate. He cries out and he begs Jesus, please come to my house. My little girl, my daughter is at the point of death. Would you come, please, and lay your hands on her that she can be made whole, that she can be restored? We're talking about restoration. And so because it's a crisis, Jesus dropped everything, and immediately he is going with Jairus to his house. But as they're walking that way, and the crowd is going with them, just moving with them, all of a sudden, this li a little woman presses through the crowd, touches the hem of Jesus' garment, and Jesus stops. I'm telling you, that's what we want to do today, is we want to stop Jesus in his tracks. We want to get his attention. We want his power to be released in our lives. And what we find in this story is that this little woman touched his clothes and she was totally set free. It's so powerful. Mark 5 25 to 27, we're not going to put that up right now, but this woman was in crisis just like the ruler of the synagogue was in crisis. And we find from the story that for 12 years she had been suffering from hemorrhaging, from an issue of blood that, was, that she couldn't control, and she was as weak as water. And she had gone to physician after physician. She had gone to doctor after doctor. And instead of getting better, she got progressively worse. And to make matters worse, the doctors took all of her money. So here she is sick, sorry, and broke. And, and, and she's in a bad way. But she heard about Jesus. What did she hear about Jesus? That miracles had passed away? The day of miracles is over. Is that what she heard? Did, did she hear? Sometimes God says yes. Sometimes no. Sometimes wait. No. I'll tell you, the demon that sold that to the church should have a special category in hell. <laughs> no. She heard that Jesus was a healer. And you know what he was? He is today. He hasn't changed. If he was a healer, he is a healer. Amen. What he did, he's doing. She heard that Jesus was a healer, and he was healing every manner of sickness and disease. She heard that the blind were receiving their sight. The lepers were being cleansed. The dead were being raised to life. And it caused faith to come into her heart, because faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. It's such good news to somebody in crisis. I just want to encourage you. We're in a time now where so many people are frustrated. So many people are angry. So many people are upset. And they're upset at just about anything or anybody that you can imagine. They're upset with the government. They're upset with their boss. They're upset with the school. They're upset uh, uh, with the... Uh, with the mask, not with the mask. They're, they're upset, just up, just worked up. People are in a crisis. People are hurting. People are disappointed. And they're in a crisis and they don't know what to do and they can't get help. There isn't, there isn't anybody that can help them. But I want you to know when we're in a place where nobody can help us, we still have Jesus. He can help us. He's a very present help in our time of trouble. And she heard that Jesus was the healer. And as she thought about that, and as she meditated on that, 
the thought came to her that what Jesus did for others, he would surely do for her. Because what Jesus has done for one is a revelation of what his will is for everyone. And so she had this, uh, this faith in her heart about Jesus. Do you know that we can have faith in our heart to be healed and not be healed? It's like a contractor that is putting a road through the mountains, can have all the dynamite that he needs to make a pass through that mountain. But if, he, if that dynamite stays in the box, it doesn't do a bit of good. No, that our faith has to be released. Our faith has to be, set for, has to be activated. And so one of the ways that we activate our faith is we begin to speak with our mouth what we believe in our hearts. That's, see, it starts by hearing what God has said. This is where faith begins when we're in a crisis, when we need God's intervention in our lives. We need to find out what has God promised us. What scripture covers our situation because God already had a solution before we had the situation. God has a promise before we have the problem. But what is the promise? And so what we do is we, we look for that promise and then we meditate on it and we feed on it until that promise is planted in the soil of our hearts and starts to grow and starts to produce and then it becomes alive inside of us but it must not just stay in our heart it has to come out of our mouth even to be saved even to be born again we recognize that faith has to be in two places it's in our heart, but it also has to be in our mouth. If we're going to be born again, Romans 10, 9, 10 says that we confess with our mouth that Jesus is the Son of God and we believe in our hearts that God has raised him from the dead, we'll be saved. And so there has to be both. But this woman, she took the next step and she began to declare, once her mind was sufficiently renewed to what she had been hearing, that what God had done for one, others, he would do for her. Apparently, she had been hearing that people were touching the hem of his clothes or just touching the edge of his garment or robe, and they were using that as a point of contact to release their faith. And when they released their faith, they drew on God's healing power, on that healing anointing, and they were set free. That's what she had been hearing. And Jairus obviously had been hearing something else. He had heard that when Jesus laid hands on people, that was a point of contact to release his faith. So he asked Jesus to come and lay hands on his daughter. It depends what promise we <laughs> lay hold of. It depends on what we're hearing. But they all work if we believe them and if we activate them. And so... She began to declare, let's look at chapter 5, verse 28. This is her first step in activating her faith. Mark 5, 28 says, If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. That was her faith talking. She declared that she would be healed as soon as she touched his clothes. The instant she touched his clothes, she would be set free. That was a point of contact. That was her faith talking. That's how she released her faith. That's how she turned her faith loose. That's how she got the souls to say the dynamite out of the box. You see, it's not enough to have the rivers of, of water in our spirit. They have to flow out. They must come out of us. And so she, she could have been saying a lot of negative things. You see, we're not to use our words to describe what's going on. We use our words to change what's happening in our lives. She could have been saying that she had suffered a lot these last 12 years. She could have been saying that she was as weak as water because of all the blood she lost because she had. She could have been complaining about the doctors, 
how that they couldn't help her and they took all her money because they did. She could have been complaining about her situation in life that it would have been better off for her to have died than to live this way. But if that is what she had been declaring, that's exactly what would have happened in her life. But she was able to turn the record over, so to speak. She was able to turn the tables on the enemy because it's the thief that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The devil goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And, uh, and the Bible says, now whom we're to res resist steadfastly in the faith, with our faith. This woman decided that she was going to offer some resistance. She'd put up with this for 12 long years and she made up her mind. It was time to draw a line in the sand and say, look, that's it. The no more. She decided she's going to fight back. She's going to have some pushback. And she started to declare, first of all, with the words of her mouth, what she believed in her heart. If I touch... If I just touch the hem of his garment, I will be whole. I will be healed. You know, the thing is, is when we talk about our trials and our troubles and we're telling everybody about our aches and our pains, we stop God's healing power from flowing into our bodies. When we're telling everybody about how that we're so poor we can't pay attention, that we, we're just having trouble to pay our bills, and it's the government's fault, it's the economy's fault, it's, you know, if our boss just paid us more, if this happened or that happened, it stops God from bringing provision into our lives. Because it has nothing to do with what God's promised us. We live before an audience of one. God meets our needs. God's our source. And, but today I want to talk about faith requires action. So let's turn again to the gospel of Mark chapter 5. And of course she had said, if I only may touch his clothes, I'll be made well. But verse 29 says, immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up. And of course we know that because that's what she said would happen. And she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came, fell down before him, and told him, that's Jesus, the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith, not my faith, your faith has made you well, has made you whole. Has That, that word well is the, is the all-inclusive word. It means healing. It means wholeness. It, it means completeness. It means restored. Amen. And then he says, go in peace and be healed of your affliction. It wouldn't have done the woman a bit of good to have heard about Jesus and about all the things he had done, the people he had healed, the people he had cleansed, the people that were lame, that walked. And it wouldn't have done her a bit of good if she had made uh, a confession of what she believed in her heart if she hadn't acted on her faith. There's lots of people that have heard a lot of things. And they, they, they can tell you a lot of things. They heard this and they heard that but their faith is dormant. It's not just what we hear. The Bible says it's not the hearers only that get the results, but we're to be a doer of the word. James 1 tells us that faith is dead without corresponding actions. So this woman not only started to take a step and activate what she believed in her heart by speaking with her lips what she believed, but she began to act her faith. 
she began to act as if what God had told her was true. And that's what brings the results. Because faith is an action word. The Bible tells us how important that is. See, her, her faith had to overcome a lot of obstacles. She had this flow of blood, and in her day, she was called what, what we would term as unclean. It was just as if she was a leper. She could not live with her family. She couldn't be with her friends and neighbors. She couldn't go uptown. She couldn't go to the restaurant. She couldn't go to church. She couldn't be in public. She could be stoned. And she couldn't touch anybody, and no one could touch her. She was an untouchable. Is that a problem? Because what you've got in your heart is to touch the, the clothes of Jesus, and you can't be out in public. You can't touch anybody, and no one can touch you. That's what, that's the, what the law was. But she had to make up her mind. Look, God has promised me something, and I'm going to receive it. I don't care who it identifies me with or who it separates me from. I'm going to get what belongs to me. I'm going to reach out with the hand of faith and get what is mine. It's not just going to come to us on its own. A lot of people are thinking, you know, if everything was done 2,000 years ago, well, that's great. Then it'll just happen. If it's meant to be, it'll be meant to be. That's not true. We have, to re we have to receive it. We have to lay hold of it. See, her faith was on trial. 1 John 5.4 says, This is the victory that overcomes the world, even your faith. See, it isn't your prayers that overcome the world. It isn't th the love that we have for people that overcomes the world. It is our faith. All these things are important, but what pleases God is our faith. The most important thing in your life and in my life is our faith in God's Word. Faith in God's Word is faith in God Himself. It isn't hearing what God says that overcomes the world. It is acting on what God says that overcomes the world. She had no one to help her. She had no agency in her corner. She, she was in a position, she's as weak as water. She couldn't be out in public. She had to force her way through that crowd. She was determined. You and I have to be more determined to have what God wants us to have than the enemy is to keep us from having what God wants us to have. I remember Keith Moore talking about healing school, and there was one lady that came to healing school, and uh, she'd been given up. I think she had six months to live. And she came to healing school in the morning, and he supernaturally was drawn to her by the Spirit of God and ministered to her. And she told him what the doctor said, and he said to her, he said, if you'll come to healing school every morning and every afternoon, uh, for the rest of this year, I believe that you'll beat this thing. And, of course, she didn't show up in the afternoon. She didn't show up the next morning. And, and uh, a couple days later, she sh she's there. And he says, where were you the last couple of days? Well, she says, every year, my sisters and I, we plant uh, uh, the flower beds for each other. And, and God spoke to him and said, she'll be dead in two weeks. She wasn't that interested. See, the woman with the issue of blood, this was a priority. She didn't have time for this. She couldn't do it, but she did what she couldn't do. This was, this was life and death. She wasn't casual about this. She wasn't to be out in public. In fact, uh, people that study this say that she probably disguised herself and she probably pushed through the crowd on her hands and knees. She was so determined that she was going to have 
what she said she was going to have. She just didn't say it, but she acted on her faith. She released her faith. See, many people in her condition would have given up somewhere down the road and said, you know, this is too hard. If it's easy, I'll do it. But uh, it was a challenge. We know from the parable of the sower that sows the word that of all the people that hear God's promises and hear God's word, that only 8% get the fullness out of, that, out of the promises of God. 8%. Do you know why? Number one, the enemy comes immediately to steal the word. But if we're casual about it, we'll let him. The other 25%, was affliction and persecution for the word's sake. Somebody called a person a holy roller. Somebody teased somebody. Somebody disapproved of a person pressing in. And a person backed off. There's, there's 50% gone. And then others, through the cares of life, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things, the other uh, 25% get busy in life. And all the other things choke out the word from producing. The word's still there. We're still hearing the word. But other things come in. And it's not a priority. I mean, we're listening to the word, but we're also seeing what uh, uh, the, the Bitcom's doing right now at the same time. Why? Because our heart's divided. We're double-minded. But then the other 25%, there's some that receive 30, some 60, and some 100 but only 8% do what this woman did. Make up your mind to be one of the 8%. Now, God wants 100%. Jesus was raised from the dead that 100% results would be ours. Everything he purchased is for all of us. But there has to be a press. There has to be determination. I don't care what anybody thinks. I don't care how hard it is. I don't care what comes or what goes. We're going to have what God has promised us. The faith of this weekly, she's, she's weak, she's sickly, she is unclean, she is uh, pushed aside, but her faith brought her the results that she was looking for. She received her healing after her confession, after she acted on her faith. Many people are waiting until they're healed before they make a confession of faith. Many people are waiting until the circumstance changes. Then we'll raise a hallelujah. But we were singing today, we need to sing it in the midst of our enemies. Paul and Silas did their worshiping not after they got out of prison. They did it when their backs were bleeding. It was a press. They were acting their faith. They were releasing their faith when they, did, they didn't feel like it. Verse 30, And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, he said, Who touched my clothes? This woman received her healing by the law of faith before Jesus knew anything about it. He had no earthly idea who pulled on his, on that anointing that was in him. Do you know that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is in you? No wonder we sing, Lord, teach us to be aware of your presence. That same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is in each of us. Wouldn't it be nice if we were just uptown, we were just walking around and somebody bumped into us and they got healed? Or they got delivered from a lifelong addiction? And we didn't, even, we didn't even know who it was. Well, what was that? Boy, that river just flowed out of me. Who did that? Jesus was asking, who touched me with their faith? The crowd was touching Jesus physically, but somebody drew the miracle working power of God out of him. The faith of God in her put a demand on the anointing that was in and upon him, and it caused her to be made completely whole. How do we reach out and touch the Lord today? By laying hold of his promises. 
by putting him in remembrance of what he has promised us and acting like they're true. Believe and say that by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Declare that your child is turning around. And the enemy will say, you can't say that until they do. No, you say it before. My child is turning around and God is opening new doors of opportunity for me. Come into God's presence and begin to declare, Lord, you have made me a lender and not a borrower. And you meet my needs, not according to my needs, but according to your riches and glory by one Christ Jesus. I am the head and not the tail. No weapon formed against me will prosper. See, that's how we lay hold of the Lord today by our faith, is we get a hold of one of his promises, and we hold fast to it, and we don't let turn it loose. But we do turn our faith loose by our words and by our action. Just like the prodigal. The prodigal son. I'm sure was on the receiving end of prayers from mom and dad. But you know, all the prayers do is they keep the enemy, they keep the person alive till God can work in a person's heart. That's what the prayers do. So to keep praying, keep praying. It's like our parents. Uh, we made up our mind with my parents that if they had to live to be a thousand years old, they're not going to die until we know they're saved. We couldn't, we couldn't believe in our heart and speak with our mouth salvation for them. That is something they had to do, just like the prodigal. So mom came first in around, she slid in around 94 years of age. Dad, a year or two later, he slid in. All we could, well, our prayers, we just kept the traffic off the road so that God could keep working and working and working and working and working on their heart. That's what happened to the prodigal. The mom and dad's prayers kept God from working and kept the devil from killing them. But only he could, could yield to the Holy Spirit and come to his senses. And only he could say with his mouth, I will arise and go home to a father's house. But it, he would, that nothing would have happened until he got up and actually went. See, his faith was activated when he went. And so here's what I want you to know. Our faith has to be activated. Verse 32, and he looked around. He wanted to know who had done this. He had no idea. And then she told him the whole truth. Told him that it is your faith that made you whole. It's the first Jesus knew about it. It wasn't his faith. It was her faith. So I would just encourage you, just don't brush up against the Lord. Just don't passively just, oh, I did devotions. I got a sticker. I, I read that I read that chapter. No, uh, read the word until the word comes alive. Read it until it starts to speak to you and then allow that word to to live in your spirit. And then get that on your lips. Because I, I'm telling you, we will be we will need those scriptures. So she not only I'm talking about. The woman with issue of blood, she not only confessed what she believed Jesus was doing and would do and had done, she acted on what she had believed. And she pressed through. And so I just encourage you that it is your faith that activates the power to set you free from addiction. It is your faith that breaks the power of sickness and disease. It's your faith that breaks the power of poverty over your life. It's, the, it, it's faith that causes that spirit of fear to be broken over a person's life and, and condemnation and these things. And I would just encourage you, do like this lady and do like Miss Linda. Just reach out with a hand of faith and, and touch the Lord by having that word alive in your spirit don't be casual about it because if you do your faith will make things happen in your life that you could never make happen for yourself god will open supernatural doors of opportunity 
and he'll turn things around for your good and for his glory and he will bring total restoration to you let's pray father in the name of jesus i thank you that you are a restoring god you're a faithful god and what you've done for another you will do for anyone that'll trust you thank you for bringing your promises to our remembrance i thank you lord jesus for helping us to guard our hearts so that father that the word that we're hearing can produce 30 60 and even 100 fold in our lives help us to meditate on them day and night not to allow them to depart from our lips until we receive the fullness of what you have promised i thank you father that our last days are going to be better than our former days our best days are right in front of us and father we just thank you for your word that's working mightily in jesus mighty name amen and i would just encourage anybody that first of all do you have a day that you know that you crossed the line a day that you called upon the name of the lord all things become new the condemnation left the guilt left the shame left the the discouragement left and all of a sudden the sky was bluer, the grass was greener, and the birds sounded better. Everything changed on the inside because it changes on the inside before it changes on the outside. You can look back to that day just like you can look back to your birthday. You know when you were born. Can you look back to the day that you crossed the line and you were born again? If not, I'd like to pray for you. Or if you have crossed the line at one time, and you believe God, but something happened, like with the woman of the issue of blood. There were some obstacles. There were some disappointments along the way. There, there was some opposition along the way, and you give up, and you threw in the towel, and, and you walked away from the Lord because He didn't come through with you, for you. And now you realize He didn't fail you. You just were, you just didn't press. And, and you realize it's not by works that we receive from God. Everything's by grace, but there is an action that must take place. There is a determination that must take place. There is a consistency that must take place. There is a, a, a fight, a faith that must take place. And now you realize that you kind of laid down when you should have risen up. And now you want to come back to him. You know that the Lord never failed you. And also, I'd like to pray for anybody that's dealing with any kind of sickness and disease in their bodies. But we'll, we'll pray this other first. So if you have never crossed the line and received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, or if at one time you did walk with Him but you got disappointed and you thought He failed you, now you realize He didn't, you can come back. Just, just say after me, I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and my personal Lord and Savior. I believe with my heart that God raised Him from the dead for my salvation. Fill me with the Holy Spirit that I may serve the Lord all the days of my life in gladness. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, you're a child of God and the family of God, and we have some information we'd like to send you. Just email the address on the screen. And again, we would just uh, welcome to the family of God. But also, if you have sickness and disease in your body, I just want you to know that we're, we don't have to beg God to do something He already has. And that we just want to we just want to pray. Anybody here dealing with sickness, disease? I, I'm telling you, we need to, we need to rise up. If, if you're watching this, I'd, right where you are, I want you to release your faith. The woman with the issue of blood, she used the hem of Jesus' robe as a point of contact. It, use what we say as a point of contact. When we say amen, release your faith. So we're going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you 
for anybody that's dealing with sickness and disease, I just thank you for our tenacity rising up within each one. That, Father, that as, as Miss Linda says, that you strengthen them and their inner man with a spirit of might so that, Father, they can put on the whole armor of God and fight life through and drive darkness out, drive disease out, drive infirmity out with a spirit of faith. We call everyone that is dealing with sickness, disease, healed and whole in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Now keep that up. Keep declaring it. Keep saying it. And any time the thought comes, uh, it's not working, I just want you to say, no, it's working by the stripes of Jesus. I am healed. I am whole. And thanks again for being part of this service. Have a great week. We just want to bless you. Now the Lord, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you.